and we declared Monet disciple. Jean Monet is um, surprisingly overlooked as an important figure because he is, tends to be totally related to well, what people may call European federalism or the building of the United States of Europe or whatever. Now, Monet had a most remarkable career um, as a when he was a youngster in the First World War, um, the French government was in Bordeaux, and he, through connections, got an interview with the Prime Minister and said, it makes no sense that France and Britain are fighting Germany, but they, by, they are competing with each other in buying armaments. So why don't we have a joint purchasing of armaments? And the Prime Minister accept that and he was put in charge of coordination. And in the Second World War, travelling on a British passport, he in fact um, worked on this in Washington. He shortened the Second World War by one year because he looked at the figures that, that Roosevelt had shown that the Americans could produce in the way of armaments, ships, aircraft, etc. And then he famously did his balance sheet where he took factories in the states that could be converted and almost on the back of an envelope and said to the president, this is vastly underestimated and the targets should be these. And all the professional advisors were opposed, but Roosevelt was sold it because he was a very persuasive man, uh, Monet and he increased the targets, and the targets were exceeded. We were already um, aware of Monet when I became an officer of the Bar Association, and we had the idea uh, in 19, oh, I don't know, 1979, I think, we launched a European lawyer's passport um, where you prove that you are a lawyer to plead before the court in any different member state. And we got a message from Monet on that subject. It was, of course, not written by Monet, it was approved by Monet, and it was the last message before he died. Um, and he published it, then his memoirs came out, and uh, it was naturally natural for me to read them. And when was this? We're talking about late 70s. Monet died in, uh, I think, 78 or something like that. One of the reasons for his success was he was a threat to nobody. He wasn't ever wishing to run for political office. He was director of the plan in France, rebuilding of France. He was the first president, if you like, of the commission. But he was never a threat. And as he always said, um, people divide into those who want to be somebody and those who want to do something. In his methodology, I mean, what was interesting is he saw during the war, there's evidence of notes he wrote as early as 1943 when he was in Algiers. During the war, um, he'd already worked out that 
reconciliation between France and Germany was an absolute. And his approach was one based always on equality, never on sitting the, on the opposite side of the table. The idea was you find the common interest And having found the common interest, what you're facing is a common problem which requires a common solution. So you put the problem there in the middle of the table and you sit round it. It sounds... Uh, okay. But by this approach, he was extraordinarily successful. And as I've said, he was a very, very... Uh, he was a very clever lobbyist, even down to the fact that he knew that the top man was the man who had to make the decision, but there were lots under him who could block. And that in the days of writing letters, how do you make sure the great man reads a letter? He knew this, he always got on with the secretaries, persuade them to put the letter on the top of the pile. These very small things were absolutely essential when you when you are trying uh, when you're trying to influence. And there are and um, his capacity and this is where I try I've always tried to learn his It's very hard for how you free your mind. Um, we, certainly Anglo-Saxons, when we have a problem, we tend to um, attack it hours on end in meetings. Not, that was not Monet's method. Monet always had relatively short meetings, even if you spent a day with him, you'd keep breaking off and leaving the discussion, doing your own thing in the garden or whatever and coming back. And the method of debate principle was that nothing you say is stupid. And don't wait until your idea is developed before you present it. So that, um, and the other thing is, and this he learned from a wonderful quotation from the old King Saud of uh, Saudi Arabia, who said everything in life is means, including obstacles. When you come up against a problem, you don't worry about getting around it. You worry about how to take advantage of it. Um, if a, in everyday life, if you are a decorator and the room has a big, in the middle of this room there is a, um, uh, there's a pillar, you can't hide the pillar, so you feature the pillar. That sort of example. The other thing was Monet was always thinking a long way ahead. My uh, colleague Max Constam, who at 90, he's 97 now, he's the last surviving founding father. Max always told the story, he was on holiday in France, in a day when communications in France were very difficult. He was in a village, and he got a telegram from Monet, so he cycled several kilometers to the telephone. Um, and Monet says, I have to talk to you urgently. And Mike says, what about he, uh, he says about monetary cooperation in the 60s. And um, he was always, as I say, looking to the future. Thank you.